Yeah, well, not so many. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live. Hey, I want to say welcome. I want to say thank you for joining us today. Go ahead and put, uh, if you can hear me okay, and you can comment in the Facebook box, the chat box, put your comments in there. I can share your comments. You can ask your questions. I've got Candace on deck with me. I've got other team members in there helping, um, you know, man the questions and the comments. And just want to say thanks. This is going to be an exciting little day. So I'm going to get diving right into it. And here's what I do. So I want to start each of our live streams, at least for a while, with a few minutes about our vision. Because you guys, our customers, you are number one to us. Our goal is to make you happy. Our goal is to make you money. Our goal is to give you the tools to make money. And if you don't succeed, we don't succeed. So I want, that's why I want you guys to know that. And two, I also want you to know, what our vision is, because when you understand what our vision is, you're in for a, an exciting ride. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a PowerPoint. We're going to go through about five or six slides where I share the vision and then we're going to dive right into training today. And we're going to talk about how to customize your launch car store. And I got all kinds of cool stuff for you. So let me go right to the screen. There we go. You guys can see the screen. OK, you can hear me. OK, put a put something, put a chat box. And yeah, Greg, I can hear you and I can see the screen. OK and uh, in the comment box, I guess. But so here it is. This is the big idea for Launch Cart. Imagine a tech company with the vision to lower the barrier of entry worldwide for small and medium-sized businesses and celebrities, influencers, and brands, and you, entrepreneurs, to build an online e-commerce business with no distribution, with, with no upfront costs, no inventory costs, while simultaneously creating a distribution channel of millions of sellers for manufacturers and brands in the United States to sell their products around the world. Allowing manufacturers and brands who are dying in retail to thrive online with direct to consumer sales and giving entrepreneurs you the ability to earn significant income participating in the e-commerce boom. Now that's a mouthful and you might not quite understand that, but it's gonna come clear here in a second. So we do believe that e-commerce is one of the most lucrative business opportunities of the 21st century. It's easy for anyone to get on and create a store and start selling stuff. It's e-commerce. E-commerce is just hot, right? And here's just one screenshot. You guys are hearing it with the COVID-19, everything sped up, but all over the globe, we're talking about a multi-trillion dollar business and we just need to get a little piece of it for us to be really, really happy, okay? So LaunchCart. LaunchCart is an e-commerce SaaS platform designed to help facilitate direct to consumer sales for celebrities, influencers, and brands. Now, what's unique about us is we do have a division where we offer a full 360 e-commerce management for celebrities, influencers, and brands. And we also have a done-for-you service. So if you want us to build your store for you and hand over the keys to you, we can do that as well. So we do a little bit of that to put some gas in the car, generate some revenues. And also we have a hand on what's really working and what's really not working. So we're actually doing e-commerce for celebrities, influencers, and brands, which enables us to know and have the insights to build a better SaaS platform. 
The other thing that's really unique about us, and of course you know this, is, is that LaunchCart is a free platform. So we're offering it for free. And the idea is we want to lower the barrier of entry that allows anyone around the world to get involved. The other thing that's unique about us, and you don't know this, is we're creating a B2B business to business marketplace that's going to allow manufacturers and brands to upload their catalog of products into our ready to sell marketplace. Now, right now, the marketplace is the, the, the design marketplace where you get the designs for the uh, print on demand products. Imagine if you could get physical goods and hats and shirts and belts and, 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 and you click some buttons and now those products are in your store. So right now, as you guys know, we're integrated with Printful and we plan on integrating with other print on demand and print on manufacturer on demand partners. But we have over 300 products that are in our print on demand ready to sell marketplace right now. Everything from men's clothing to women's clothing, to kids and youth clothing, to sportswear, to streetwear, to gifts, to workwear, jewelry, flip flops, backpacks, bags. You can put together a really, really nice store with branded products and sayings. And I'm going to show you a number of these today. And the reason this is so successful and this can work for you and everybody else is drop shipping and print on demand have changed the industry, right? And so as you, so there's a lot of new people on here and there's a lot of people that are kind of seasoned. So, you know, bear with me for your seasoned people, but for the new people, look, you're going to generate a customer. They're going to go to your storefront. They're going to pay you the money. You're the seller. You're going to find the drop shipper. In this case, it's Printful. Printful is going to process the order, make the product, ship the product, and then you're, you, you don't ever have to touch the product. And then you take what's in the middle there. That's what we call drop shipping and print on demand. And we want to add to that physical products and just a whole catalog. I, you know, just imagine going into a marketplace and having brands upload their entire catalog. So imagine if you had the ability to go to Amazon, search Amazon, and then click the products and sell those products in your store and never touch the product but still make a good, a good commission, a good fee. So the end result is we're lowering the barrier of entry. We're democratizing e-commerce for all. We're disrupting the e-commerce industry. And we're allowing you to get involved with no inventory costs, print on demand, manufacture on demand one at a time, and you don't pay until you sold some products. So I hope that kind of shares with you guys a little bit about the vision and it'll come more and more clear as we continue to add features and functionality to the platform. Um, but the real bottom line with it is, is when we get, when we have the ability to allow manufacturers and brands to upload their catalog into a marketplace and allow you the seller to click some buttons and add those products to your store. So as you're driving traffic to your store, or you've get created your email address, or your email database, or if you created your brand, you're going to be able to make extra money selling other people's products. And we're really going to be working with emerging countries all over the world. And we're going to bring millions and millions of sellers on this platform. And right now, for the first time, uh, we're allowing investors to invest in LaunchCart because we believe that we really are going to be a competitor of Shopify. Now, one thing that those slides didn't say that I want to share with you, and then we're going to dive into today's training, is it is our intention to build a platform that is better, faster, converts higher than Shopify. Now, right now, if you went and signed up for Shopify and you went and signed up for LaunchCart, we kind of have the same features. Now, but Shopify has the app community. We have to go install this app and that app and this app and that app and this app. Next thing you know, your bill is 600 bucks, a thousand bucks. We don't have that yet, but we're gonna take the top functionality of the most popular apps on Shopify and we're gonna build that into LaunchCart and as we build in a launch cart, it's still going to be part of our free platform. So we're going to have a better platform than Shopify, and it's not going to cost anything. And then we will have a subscription model at some point, and we'll kind of grow into that. But it's going to be really, really, really cool. Now, along those lines, one thing that I did want to share with you guys, and I'm going to be sharing this a lot, but I'm going to put this in the comments right now, is we have a feedback page. So let me go and put this in the comment box. Go back to sharing my screen. So there's my screen. So when you click that link, it's going to take you to this page. Now, this is a feature request page. And we want you and all of our customers, we want you to go here regularly and vote. What do you want launch card? So we have this philosophy. Find out what your customers want and give it to them. Find out what you want and give it to you. Right. So this is where you get to come and you can add a feature or an enhancement or something you want us to build into launch cart and then other people can vote on it. But if you take a few minutes to go here and just read these different things and then cast your vote, whatever floats to the top 
we're going to get done first, right? We're going to build what our customers want first. And we're going to start rolling out these enhancements. Every every week, we should be rolling out some new enhancement, some new feature uh, and stuff like that. So pretty, pretty excited about that. So... Oh, I just saw a private message from Candice. I can't see your screen. So a little, little late for that, Candace. Uh, I've, I've gone for 10 minutes. So I don't see any comments coming through. But if you're if you're live, type your name or let me know where you're calling in from or let me know that you're listening in the comment box. Uh, let me know what you think so far or something. Put a, make a comment in the Facebook comments. Amber, somebody. I don't see any comments coming through. So I want to make sure it's working. Okay. So that being said, Get to that features, make your vote, cast your votes, and we will go from there. Okay, now let's dive into today's training. So today's training is is going to be about how do you customize, what can you do to make your theme look better, your site look better. So what we're going to do is we're first going to start by going through some sites of people that have shared in our private group and go through some customer sites and go through a couple of our sites and then... Uh, okay, I see we do see it. So there we go. So we got Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, and uh, viewing from Mexico. Okay, so we do have some people that are saying, then we got some people from Canada. There we go. Very cool. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show some sites, and we're just going to kind of critique them a little bit and go, okay, here's what we could do to make it look a little bit better. Here's what we could do to test, just what we should look at, things like that. And even my site, we're going to take, and we're going to end up on one of my sites, and we're going to really kind of dig in and show you some, some back-of-the-scenes stuff, okay? So with that being said, we'll get rid of launchcart.com. Okay, um, so let me start over here. So here's a site. Uh, I liked, I love the brand and the logo, the Bulldog Breed Tees, and the, it's a Bulldog uh, UK. But what I don't really care for is the logo is kind of small, and this theme is not made for a round logo that you can't read. And by the way, I have this Chrome extension called Mobile. Let's see what it's called. I forget. I'm going to hover over it. It's called Mobile Browser Emulator. And I click on it, and it will show me what this website looks like on a mobile browser, Right. Now, you got to remember, most of our traffic is going to be mobile. So we also want to keep in mind, what's that first photo? Can I see what the design is? Now, this looks pretty good. I can see the design on these. But sometimes I see images where you can't really see the design on a mobile device. That's even maybe a better a better look. Okay, so I do the mobile emulizer, so I always do that. Um, so look at the logo. And going back to my site, now look at this logo. See, now that logo, I can kind of drag it to see what kind of size it is, but it looks kind of really nice. And then when you go to mobile mobile here, it puts it, it, puts it there, and then the slider images are going to slide through here this way, right? But you also got to look at, see, see how these mobile, these mobile images are not being resized properly. Something's wrong with the way they're created or added, and those need to be looked at. So the site looks really, really good uh, on the desktop. I love the way the site looks. I love the slider images. Now, these are all graphics, right? Okay. So let me go look at another store. So here's another store, the E&H store. Um, and again, you can kind of see what theme people are using and how they're laying it out and how they're looking at it. And again, I don't really care for a logo that has a square that's on the white. I think I would take the logo and put it off this background and put it on the white background, or I would kind of do something with that. And then again, we'll look at it on mobile real quick. See on mobile how it looks? So it's kind of hard to read. So it, your logo and your design for your header of your store, you got to really take some, uh, you know, you kind of look at that until we get to where we can customize these themes even more than we are uh, and maybe see which theme it looks better on, right? We, have, we, we do have different themes. I'm going to go through that in a second one. Now, here's another one that we got the round logo up top. And again, the round logo up top doesn't really work for me, but we do have the, the nice slider images here. And I like that. Now, on this one, I think the words are too small. That's going to be embroidered on a backpack. But how do you see what those words say? I can't see them. And, and so I think that's uh, – so let's go down here to the backpack real quick. Shop now. See, I think on some of these products, uh, the logo is too small, right? So we really 
from an aesthetic standpoint and from a sales standpoint, is that too small? Would you want to get a hat with a logo that small or would you want a little bit bigger? I would want a little bit bigger. It's a super cool logo, by the way. Uh, I really like that logo. Uh, I love the whole lion thing. Um, so you look at that and you want to look at, do, is it, you know, is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it the right size? So look at that kind of stuff to how you can aesthetically make that. Now look how he changed the name, which is good, from Cub to King, right? From Cub to King, he changed the name of his header and, and, and uh, his uh, titles, which is good. You want to do that. You want to put, I would even recommend that you always put your own little paragraph here talking about the inspiration, the motivation. What's the emotion about it? When you wear this shirt, you're going to feel like you were, you know, you're motivated to be a king, right? Or whatever that is, you want to try to customize your titles and your descriptions to help people want to buy them. Now, here's one, Kenny Collections. And I wanted to show this one for one reason. So this one's got some, some slider images coming in. And the other thing you have to do that's really, really, really important is you have to be, now I'm sure this, this, this site's done, uh, but it was shared in our group. But I'm going to right mouse button on this image. I'm going to save the image. And I'm just going to save it in my downloads folder for a second. And I'm going to open up my downloads folder. And I'm going to see how big that image is. See, now that image is 493 kilobytes. Let me go, let me go full screen, see if you can maybe see it. 493 kilobytes. See that right there? And I downloaded another image from this site earlier, and that was 628 kilobytes. Your images for your store, you need to always try to get them under 100, 100 kilobytes, 100, 100 kilobytes. And if you can get them down to 50 kilobytes, that's even better. Because one of the critical, critical issues in e-commerce is page load speed. And if you have page load speed and it's and because the images are downloaded and you got multiple images and they download real slow, it's going to kill your conversions. So you have to really be cognizant that you're optimizing your images for web and download. So if there's that fine line of you want the image to look good, you don't want to have it look pixelated, but you want it to be as small as possible and to load fast. We're not going to get into that today exactly how to do that. Maybe someday we can, but you can do that. And here's another site where the logo is kind of an interesting logo, yellow fashion label. I kind of like the name. It's a cool name. I like that a lot, but I really can't read it. I can't really see it. And then get on mobile, we'll see what it looks like. See on mobile, it's just it's not working. You can't it, you can't see what it is. So you really want to look at how do you create a logo that's going to fit for that particular theme and your particular site. See on this one it looks okay. I like that. On this one, uh, this team love it site that we built. We can do that. Now one thing I want to point out real quick is you notice we have a blue here and a blue on the bottom. And if we go to a particular product, we have blue here. That's some custom CSS style sheets, and I'm going to go over that a little bit later, how you can customize the CSS style sheet to make your site look more on brand, more colorful, and have different colors for what's going on there. Okay? So, oh, so somebody said Printful has a small print area. Um, yeah, you have to be cognizant of their print area for sure. I think it's bigger than that, though. Now, here's another site that, that we built for the Unstoppable Christian. And you can see I put one slider in here. I don't have a slider slider, so just one. And this image right here ends right about the middle of the page. So it's kind of tricky with this theme. And then it bleeds into black. And then this is a black background. And the reason we do that is because this theme is optimized for mobile. And when I go to mobile and I look at it on mobile, you can see here's the image that, that's this image on the right. And then here's the black background and the button, okay? So I hope that makes sense, and we'll obviously take your questions and answer your, your questions as well. So, so now here's a store that we built for my wife and I. This is our store, and it's a faith-based store, and it's called Inspiration by God. And again, I just have one big image and one big background, and I'd like to even make that a smaller image, actually, so it, don't, it doesn't scroll so far. And then I got... Uh, my hot products here, and then I got my featured products here, and then I got more products down here. And you can see, again, we have the blue and the blue. We customize this. We have books that we're selling because we, we ship these books ourselves. Uh, and then we got this. So the one thing I do want to point out that before you get started, the very first thing you should do is try to review other people's stores or sites 
figure out what you want your categories to be, accessories, books, canvas wall art, home and living, mugs, men's apparel, women's apparel, and create your categories first. It's real important you create your categories first, and then you can even create your menus first, and you can start to look on how things look. Uh, and, and, you know, again, going to how do, how do things look when I go to the, uh, how over here, right? So it gives you an idea of how the site's going to look. So we're going to dive into this a little bit more deeper here in a second. And here's another store that I'm building that's not done yet. But again, you can see the logo. And again, if I go mobile emulator, see the logo looks really, really good. Just top and center on this theme. Okay. And then I got my products starting to come down that way. But we haven't, I haven't finished this store yet. Okay. So let me go ahead and log into one of our stores. And when you want to log into the store, you can go to you can go to launchcard.com, click login, and then get log into your store. Or once you got your private domain up and going, and you go to shop like mine is shop.inspirationbyGod, I can go to that domain, type in forward slash admin, and that'll also take me to the login page. And then of course I use password manager to store my passwords. Now one of the things I want to make sure you guys understand is you can build as many stores as you want. You can have different stores, different niches. So I have the Faith, Family, and Freedom store. I have the Inspiration by God store. And I have the VIP Influencer Party store. And so what I do is, is I'm going to go to Inspiration by God right now. So I click on that. Now I'm, on, I'm in that store. And if I go up here, see where it says new? You can just click new and you create a whole new store. So if you had you want to do a dog store and you want to do a cat store and you want to do different niches, you can log in and have multi-store management from the same login and you just pop in and out of each store. Okay. So again, going back to the categories, start with what your categories, what your categories you want them to be. And of course you can do subcategories. So I have accessories and I have net gators and jewelry. You know, I have apparel and I have women's men's and children. So you can set up your subcategories. You can drag these around. You can change the order of them and stuff like that. So create your categories. Then let's talk about the appearance and the themes. So something that I didn't even know when we first got going is when you go to the theme settings, this is where you want to look at your themes. We have right now, we only have seven themes. Okay. I personally like number six launch pad. That's the one I like. And I, I keep using launch pad over and over and over again because uh, I get more and more familiar with it. So I'm mostly familiar with the launch pad theme and each theme has its own little quirks, but they're kind of the same as well. But what you do is you can, you can hover over here and click that view example and it will take you to a store that was built with that theme. So you can kind of get an idea of how the homepage can look, uh, how the products are displayed, how they look. And you can kind of decide, yeah, I want that theme or I don't like that theme. So you hover down here under Delta. And it's going to bring up that theme. And you can see, again, we got some sliders here. And you can tell those are transparent images. See that couch is a transparent image on a background. So you have to learn each theme has its little quirks on how you have to upload your images to where to display properly. And then you can click and you can see, again, you got the categories and the different products. And you got a search box. Uh, then you got your search up here, right? Okay. So each theme does have a preview tab. So as you're kind of looking at this, um, you know, you can go through our Facebook group and look at other people's stores and what you think there, what you like there. Then you can come into here and let me go back there. I, mean, I didn't do the right thing there. Um, you can preview each theme and see if you like it and which one you like. Okay. So that's one thing to start with. Now, once we pick our theme, we go to customize. Okay. And as you noticed, I haven't uploaded my favorite icon. And the favorite icon, if you guys can see this up on the top, see that little blue thing right there? That's the Team Love It logo. And it goes in the favorite icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go upload and I'm going to go get my inspiration by God. And we're going to upload that right now. So images. And I'm going to go, oh, I want to view by size so I can see them. And I'm going to put up this image right here. Okay. And it's going to put that right there. And now when I go down to save, up top here, 
it's going to change my logo. Now it might take a few seconds for that to reset, but my logo is going to show up up there as opposed to the launch cart logo when I view my store. See, now my logo's up there. Okay. So you want to try to do get your logo. And if your logo is square, that's not going to work. So again, you have to think about what's your mark, what's going to be round, because it's got to fit in a little itty bitty, like four pixel by four. Yeah, I don't know what size that is, but it shrinks it for you. But it is a square image. So if you have those round logos like I was showing, that would be perfect. If not, you got to figure out what that is. And then of course you got to upload your logo. Now the header logo recommended size right here, 325 pixels by 85 pixels. Start to play with that and Try different sizes and make sure it looks good to you. Okay, really, really simple, but that's how you start with it. And if you don't know how to do that, you have to get somebody on Fiverr or hire somebody to do it. It's real easy. Now, as you scroll down, you have your different options. Do I want my header to be sticky or static? Now, what does that mean, header sticky or static? So I have mine sticky, right? So if I go preview my store, what that means is, is as I scroll, this header stays, pops back down. See? And if I come over here and I start to scroll down, it's, it's going to pop that down the search engine. So do I like that sticky or static? So what you can do is you can say, I'm going to make it static. Now you got to come back down here and hit save. Okay? Then I'm going to come back over here to the home page, refresh the screen. And now it doesn't it doesn't stick. It allows me to see my stuff, but doesn't stick. Doesn't show me this stuff. So depending on how you like, you can turn things on and off, and just test them and see what you like and how you want it to function. It's really kind of simple and easy. Then you come down here, display your store's phone number, and your store's number can be edited here. I want that. I I think by adding your phone number, it helps you create trust and. You got to make sure your phone number's in there, and it is, so that's good. It helps create trust, and trust helps make more sales. So then you have display your link, contact us page, display your phone number, your company's address, your social icons, and then you can put your Twitter inspiration, but you know, you put all your different URLs here, and then you hit save. And now you've kind of done the general settings for that theme, okay? Really very simple, very straightforward, simple settings for that theme, okay? Then what we want to do is we want to go to the home page. Now, enable home page is on. So when I turn that on, now it says show the slider. So now here's where I have to edit the slider and add my slider images. Now, because on my theme, I only have one image. I only have one thing. Now, and then I've got what I'm going to write here and my button test. And what your best thing to do is just to put stuff here, test it, save it, Go look at it. Go, I like that. I don't like that. And, and get a feel for it, right? Or if you want, um, you could have us build your store for you. Like we, we can talk to you about that. If you have that interest, just let us know. And then I have this show top category. So if I turn this off, right, then those top categories go away on my screen. Now, it's not going to go away until I... Uh, these are the top categories right here. So what I'm going to do is turn those back on. So I have three top categories. So I'm going to turn them off, but I'm going to hit save now. Now I come back over here and I'm going to hit refresh. And now you can see that that image is gone and it just goes right to feature products. I like the way it looks with our top categories, so I want that on. So I come back over here. I show top categories. I pick the categories I want. I arrange them. I can move them. So if I wanted to move this one up here and put that one in the middle, but I wanted the gators in the middle, I just move that there. If I want to edit it, I can edit the category. I upload an image that I want for that category, and I, what category does it link to? Okay? So very, very simple. And then on the featured products, you just start typing what you want in here, and it's going to pull it up and put your featured products. So you can put as many featured products as you want in this box, and it'll start doing that. And then this is another thing to increase trust. We have the secure online payment, the fast customer support, fast shipping. You know, you can turn that off and they go away. You turn that on and they're there. And then you can even customize a friendly description. Okay. Then we're going to go over here to colors. So now here's where you can set your primary color 
for various different things, right? And what I, again, what I imagine you do is you change these colors and test them and see what they look like. And if you want to see advanced, you can go, okay, what but what color do I want my buttons to be? What colors do I want my product price to be? What color do I want my product titles to be? What color do I want my product category titles to be? What color do I want my add to cart button to be? What color do I want my checkout button to be? Now, again, I would recommend all your buttons are the same color and you keep on brand consistency with that. But again, the whole point is you can customize all these colors for all those different features by putting, um, you know, your color hex code here or just clicking on, I want I want it to be that color black, right? So I don't want that. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm not going to hit save. Okay, so, and then the last thing is over here, I want to show you is you can put custom CSS code to customize what's going on. So here's where I put um, an exit pop-up from MailChimp and we're doing some sign-up forms with MailChimp and Optin Monster. And we'll go over that in another video someday. And then here is the custom CSS code that allows me to customize this top blue up here, the bottom blue down here, as well as the text color here. And then on product pages, this color right here. Because in our settings, unfortunately, here, you can't do that right here. You can't do, there's nowhere to change the top, the bottom, and that kind of stuff. So it's really, really important that we, you know how to do a CSS style sheet. So what we're going to do is Amber posted in our group. Let me go there real quick. Facebook sites, official group. She posted a PDF. Oh, maybe I have to approve it. Let's see. Shouldn't have to. If I go over here and I go to files, see files, see this launch cart CSS? Here's a CSS, here's a page that tells you what to do and how to do the whole stuff. Now, what we talked about today is if you want us to customize your color scheme for you and do this for you, because it can be intimidating for people that don't understand CSS code we'll do it for you and what we're going to do is if you go into your store here's what we're going to do if you go into your store and you go to the create new design marketplace and you buy twenty dollars worth of credits right over here purchase more credits if you buy twenty dollars worth of credits which how many can you buy? Let's see here. Thousand. If you buy twenty five, we're gonna do twenty five. If you do twenty five dollars in credits, we're gonna we'll 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 contact you. We'll see your order come through, and then we'll get our team and we'll customize your colors for you. So we were gonna charge like twenty five dollars to do it. We thought, hey, just buy some credits, and you buy twenty five dollars worth of credits, and we'll customize your store for you. So I'm gonna come back to my screen here for a second. Candace, with all that, did you have any comments? Did you want to say anything? It's a kind of a mouthful, huh? <laughs> can you hear me? I sure can. Um, I don't have any comments. Just if anyone has any questions, uh, comment them below. Um, it's, it's kind of an overload, but it is a lot. Any? It is a lot. And, and the thing about it is, too, is if you post your comments in the group and hopefully other group members can help as more and more people get more familiar with the platform, they get up and going. A group member can help. Uh, one of our team members can help. And we can kind of get that stuff going on. But let me look at my notes here. Uh, I showed you how to preview. I showed you how to customize the theme. Uh, I showed you I talked to you about building your categories first because it's really hard to build your store without your categories because when you build a product, you, and matter of fact, let me go back to my screen and show you something real quick. So, again, going back to my store, I went to see accessories. Where was it? Oh, like this apron. See, and we did the same mistake that I was just talking about. You can't even see what that design is. It's like the design is way too small. That's terrible. I don't like that. So that's got to be fixed, right? But uh, So my thing for that is printful. For that was my comment. Who said print for the small print area for embroidery? They do generally have a very small print area. So, I mean, that's something I can go look into you for you. But I'm assuming that is that is exceeding like that's the full print area for embroidery. 
maybe we have to look at that. Maybe you, you, you yeah. Because if that's if that's the case, it's just too small. I would, I would even, I would just take it off the store. I, I, I just can't. I mean, maybe somebody would buy it. I don't know. If it's embroidered, I mean, to me, it looks fine. I guess it's personal preference, but it's embroidery, so you know, Printful's not going to embroider a, you know, a really big print area. It's going to be really. All right. So if we go to, let's see, where is it? Let me. Got too many tabs open now. Okay. So if we um, go create new print on demand collections, the home and living. Let's just let's just let's, let's just go look and see. Uh, dude, where's the aprons at? I forget. Probably in home and living. Or maybe I don't know. Yeah, there, there it is. Aprons. Boom. Let's hope I have my store hooked up. Okay. Yeah, see how the see how the see how the, the design looks like it goes way far, way far. Well, away. just see what happens because <laughs> so blessed, it probably was the width that it could be, I'm assuming. Yeah, possibly, huh? I wonder yeah. if I could find my blessed file to see. It, it probably was exactly the exact width. Let's just, we'll just put that image in there. Let's see here. Yeah, so you, you are limited on your, on your Yeah, side. so that's, yeah. But I, I mean, to me, it looked fine. It's just a little, you know, pers it's personal preference, but. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to be real, real, you know, look at that stuff and make sure you like it. <laughs> real quick uh, though. Yeah. Scroll up, click on product, click on product info, pricing and guidelines. Um, nope. Down below to the left, down below product. It says embroidered apron. Click on oh, the right product. Here. Yeah. So if anyone needs to know the exact print file size, now you see info pricing print file templates. Go ahead and click on that. Um, it says four by four, but if you have Photoshop, you can click download and it'll give you the CSV file and um, it'll open it right up in Photoshop. But if not, it tells you the exact dimensions for. Yeah. No, that's a really, that's a really good thing you just pointed out. You know, everyone should be looking at that. And as you click around here, stock availability, uh, product guidelines, uh, what do I want in black and white? Do I want two variants? Right, so I'm doing two variants now. I have to have the white blessed, so I have to fix the image on on both of them there. In order um, to even add a variant, you'd have to save the product, because for example, you would need a a black blessed and a white blessed artwork. So you have to save it, and then once the product is already created, then you have to go click add variant and upload the other artwork. You can't do it at the same time. Oh, you can't. No. You can't do it like this. This is how I do it. Let's see. So if I do the gold one. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you have to save it and you can't do it. Right, well, see, I don't build the product, so I'm not the one good. But here's something else I want you guys to look at. Good DPI, 600, 681. You want that to be 200 to 300 minimum to get really, really good stuff of what you're doing. So anyway, I'm going to close out of there. I just want to kind of look at that because that. Yeah, if anyone have... ever wants to have help on building products, we can do another live. I can do a live and help teach that because adding variants, that is something you need to know. Um, someone did comment, though, a couple of times, Vincent, he goes, I have orders, but no shipping. And I'm assuming that is due to Printful. So maybe do you want to give an update on Printful ship times or? Yeah, let me let me go there real quick. So so here's the thing with that. Unfortunately, Printful is behind as much as four weeks on some of the products. And they've also disabled building some of the products because they're like, we're already four weeks behind on these products. Why add more problems to it and even get further behind? So they disabled us to building a lot of products. Now, there's still a ton of products you can build and it should, shouldn't, shouldn't stop you from getting your store up and launched. But and the, the, the problem with it is, or the reality of it is, is everybody's behind. Every, every, even Amazon's taking longer to ship on a lot of stuff than they normally do. And they're starting to get back to normal. They're starting to get things happening. So we just have to be patient and we will be integrating with other fulfillment partners. But I, I do stuff with, uh, 
with another store. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that company that does the shoes, Candace? Uh, it's Blake uh, behind. Pillow Profits. Oh yeah, Pillow Profits, and they're behind and they're doubling their shipping costs because uh, you know they, they, that stuff ships from China. So everything's being cost more is, is being delayed. So it's just it's just what's happening in the industry. So this is the time to get your logos, your designs, your Facebook page, your business manager, and get your business and stuff in order. And we are going to do some other live. So one of the next ones we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do mock-ups. We're going to show you how to do mock-ups in Place It. And did we find that other site, Candice? Um, it's Place It, and another site is called um, Photoific. Fo Photoific. Yeah, Photoific. So real quick, going back to Printful. So I just pulled up this page. Um, so if you go to printful.com slash COVID-19 updates, they keep track here of what's going on, how far they're behind. The latest update was June 18th. Their ALA facility is gradually resuming to the fulfillment of all of our print products. Uh, the Riga Fulfillment Center is starting to return to normal. Um, and it just tells you what's going on. And then yeah. down here, it gives you an estimate of, of how long it's going to take on each product. Yeah, so and they yeah. give tips, too. So they're saying it's for the non-apparel category. Target the European market because fulfillment is speeding up. So there right. are certain things that you can do to, you know, kind of avoid the long shipping times. But um, Antonio asks or said, I sent two orders that I bought on Printful on May 28th and received one today and the other is still out. Um, I had the same thing. One of them, I ordered like a, an embroidered hat. I got that right away and I'm still waiting for um, a t-shirt that I ordered. So for example, anything that's embroidered, they are getting shipped out quicker than like DTG and maybe all over products. So it, it should be coming. You should be yeah, able to I got that. I got that hat in about two weeks. It's sitting behind my desk. Actually, I'll show it to you guys. Vincent goes. That's just what I was doing. That's good, Vincent. Yeah, Team no, love cool it. Hat. Team love it hat. And I just, um, I, 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 one of our customers had a store with a, a cool hat with a flag on it. And I ordered one from him. I, I wear hats all the time, so I bought a hat and it had a short yeah. build brim that I didn't have, so I ordered one from him. So we'll see how long it, it takes that. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of things that are still, you know, shipping quick, like the face mask, the phone cases, the hats, the mugs. So I would just focus on those, like the accessories. And then just put on your website, you know, letting customers know the shipping time. I, I feel like people are being are a little more understanding right now due to the pandemic. So you just got to communicate that. Yeah, no, it's important you set the expectations right. So. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So I got one other thing I'm going to share. I got a video I want to show you guys. So we're going to do another live tomorrow and it's about, so we have an artist and his name is, um, Sam Maxwell and he's an amazing artist and he's put together about 20 different brands for print on demand. And he's looking to either sell a brand or license a brand or sell images, image packs. So I'm gonna play a quick little demo video and let you look at that real quick, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about uh, that real quick. So let me go back to here, and let me reset the video. This is a little demo video.
So Sam is an amazing artist. And those are all brands. Each one of those brands comes with at least 20 to 40 I mean, at least 20, and some have 40, 50 images. So you have cats, and you have, you know, sick puppies, and you have gamers, and you have so all kinds of niches. So again, from a long-term perspective, one of the things that we're always promoting people is create a brand, create something that has longevity, because you're never going to get rich overnight, right? That's just like a fallacy. But if you create a brand, you start to get people wearing your stuff and they're sharing it and wearing it and sharing it and wearing it. And over time, you keep building and keep building and keep building. It becomes a very significant income asset for you. So we're going to do a, a, a live tomorrow with Sam. So I'll post it again in the group and I'll post on the, on the thing and we'll probably do an email as well. And uh, we're going to introduce you to Sam and we're going to talk about, you know, kind of some of his mindset of why he created this one and why he created that one showing you guys some more images and some more stuff, but they actually, there's some just amazing stuff in there that could be a great, great jump start for those who, um, you know, have the money to, you know, buy into and license, a, a, a you know, the, the artistry because it, he spends hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours creating these designs. Yeah. Vince, thought- Vince asked, so would we sell his stuff on our store? And Antonio goes, I think you buy or buy the license to sell it. So. Yeah. And then you could sell it on launch card. You could sell it on, wherever you sell. Now, some of our customers are using LaunchCart, but they also have an, an eBay store. They also have an Etsy store. They also have an Amazon store. So you could sell it, you know, you license it and you license the rights to those those images. Uh, you can sell it wherever you want to sell it. So, and we'll go over that in detail on that on that call. Okay, so I know here's a question that got asked. If I deselect um, shipping on all my products, Will the customer see it as free shipping at checkout? And Candice, do you know the answer to that question? My answer is I'm like 99% sure yes. When you delete, deselect that in your launch cart store, you're not going to have shipping show up on the checkout page. Will my customer see it as free shipping at checkout? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's do this then. We'll just, we'll just test it real quick. So if I go to a, a product... And the sh- I hit edit the product, and I'm gonna. He's right here. So he says automatically calculate shipping at checkout. Oh yeah. So if I uncheck that, right, and I hit save, you did not uncheck it. I don't think yeah. you. Yeah, I did. Oh, you unchecked it. And I hit save. Now I'm gonna go to view that product. So I click the little eyeball. Now it takes me to that product. I actually want one of these. Excel, add to cart, proceed to checkout. You have to put in your information. Free shipping. So that answers your question, right? Free shipping. If I uncheck that box, it's free shipping. Otherwise, the the, the, the shipping calculation will come from Printful, and Printful will calculate what the shipping cost is. So then you'd want to include, you know, shipping in the, in the price. Like. Right. You got to be very careful because if you're giving free shipping, you're paying shipping. Printful will charge you shipping. Okay. That makes just because <laughs> you check that box doesn't mean Printful's not going to charge you. Printful will charge you a shipping fee. So you have to bump up your overall cost and calculate your profits when you price that out. So, okay. So five cent tart. Let's see. So can I highlight that? I really can't. Okay, let me try that. She goes, let me check out her store. So F-I-V-E-D-E-N-T-A-R-T dot launch card dot store. Now, here's the other thing, too. If you try to put a, a www in front of that, it will not work. Unless you're using, unless you properly have done that. Now we're going to fix that. But right now, if you put a www in front of that URL, it's not going to come up. It's not going to come up. Cool. Now see, now see how your logo stands. At, oh, hold on. I got to share the screen. See how your logo stands up and just pops. It's like five cent art. I got it. You know. Now I don't know if you wanted that to be all one word, and and what if, if there's some meaning to that. Or do you want to put a space so it's five cent art and there's like a little space? So okay, it's, it's five cent. So I would make your logo and I'd put a little space so it was so so you could see the space there, right? And again, if I go to mobile emulator, 
See, you got the logo. You can see, read what it is. And but again, you're you're using this 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 stuff without putting the space in it, which maybe that's cool. That might be a great way for you to you just have to decide what your style guide is for your for your uh, for your logo. It's that's nothing wrong with doing five cent art, right? Um, Now, see, I love this. So the one thing I want you to do is put a put a nav bar up here on top. You have shop up top, but put some create a menu at the top like you have over here, right? And create your main stuff. Now, again, here's the other thing I want people to figure out. So you have all caps women and then lower caps men and, and lower caps youth. Go back and edit all that and get real consistent with how, either do it all caps or do it first letter cap or do it all lower cap, but get consistent so it looks consistent with what you're doing. Same thing with all your naming conventions and everything you're doing. But this is looking great, right? Now, and again, we might want to, because you got that red going on, you might want to use that CSS style thing I said, and change the color of the top and the bottom. See, this is this doesn't, this doesn't is not on brand, right? Uh, and look how many products you've built. Boy, you've built a lot of products. It's gone to town, perfect, awesome. And then notice what she did here too. She's got, is it a she? I'm not sure if it's a she. Um, I just, I'm just, I just, I just guessed or made something up. But you've got your name in the title of everything, which is very interesting, right? So from an SEO standpoint, search engine optimization standpoint, is that good? Is that bad? That, that, that could be good. If people start looking for you, if they start Googling you and, and searching for you, they're going to find you. Okay, which, by the way, let me show you guys that real quick. So if I go, uh, where's my store? If I go here and I hit edit this product, right here, edit website SEO. Everyone needs to click that and and, and think about what they want. There's, you know, if I'm googling and I'm looking for, you know, Father's Day T-shirt or Father's Day T-shirt with a dog, right? Whatever you can you can customize some of the stuff here on what's going to show up on Google when they search for it. And this is just generic stuff that we put in here and it's not really that good. You should customize, you should customize the, the all this stuff. I mean, you need to customize as much as you can. Now this stuff is not gonna be customized. That is, that's the product, it is, it's the product description. But you should put some stuff here to customize. And I need to do the same thing, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. So, okay. All right, cool. That's a good comment. She, they put at the end of their website for SEO. All right, cool. I, I like that store. Looking good. Some cool designs. Very, very cool. Work on your top nav. Or so going back to how do you get that top navigation? If I go to menus, appearance, menus. See, we have. We don't we have, see the screen. Oh, we're on the screen. Good job. Okay, so back to the screen. You go back to menus. And here's where you have your menus. You add new. And you can put the menus, you create all your menu items. And that's how you create your menu. Just go to menus and, and then play with it. It's fun. You know, you're, you're kind of building something. And so it's, I, I like it. It's like for me, I got, you know, so much stuff building the business and the team and, and working on the business. I like playing in here. It's like, it's like I, feel, I feel rewarded when I build something and do something. Okay, so we've been going almost an hour, so I'm going to do last call for questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. So I wanted to keep this to an hour. We're right on the 53-minute mark, which is perfect. Uh, last call for questions, or if you guys want us to look at your site or do anything else, let us know, and then we'll wrap it up here in a few minutes. And then again, if you did want us to help you customize the color scheme and, and, and install the CSS style code for your store, you go buy $25 of marketplace credits, create a support ticket that you bought the credits, tell us what colors you want for the top and the bottom, how you want them customized, and then we'll get some team member to do it for you. Have it done lickety, lickety split. Take take less than a day. So it takes doesn't take that long. We just need to know from you what color you want, but we'll, we'll write that code and install it on your store for you. I like that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Give us the feedback on what you think about this stuff. I wonder why no one's name is showing up. Usually people's names show up. Yeah, that's Vincent, though. I'm on the actual Facebook um, live, so I can see the names because it's not showing. But Vincent said this is helping me so much. So, Oh, Thank thanks, you. Vincent. Mm -hmm. I wonder, if, is that because they're coming from the group or are you on the Facebook page? 
I'm not sure. I think huh. I, I'm on. I think I'm on. Oh, I'm on the official group, so maybe that's why. I don't know. It's it's weird because every time I've used this platform before, it showed the names. But. Yeah, John goes great training. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, so put a support ticket in for launch links. Let us know what you're having the problem. We'll get we'll get you an answer on that. And then remember, everyone go to the feature page and 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 vote on the features that you want next. And if you and, and if what you want to vote for is not there, put it in, and then other people will vote on it. And then to be promoted and the, you know, vote, 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 vote. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in. So with that, I always like to end everything with this. Do what I do, wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude and then tell somebody you love them and you'll have a better day. So this is Greg saying thanks, everybody. We appreciate you. You're number one for us. we got to take care of you and you'll take care of us. And so we're signing off. Thank you. Wait. Someone has one quick question. It's a good it's a good question before you sign off. Antonio asks, I've been waiting about 24 hours to have my custom domain to be verified by Launch Court. Is this normal? I haven't, it should, I haven't it should, seen that it, should, it shouldn't take 24 hours. Antonio, uh, uh, PM me your, your URL and let me look at it. I'll find out. Okay. So usually it takes between two hours to 24 hours max, but usually it doesn't take that long. Okay. Okay. Signing off, everybody. Say goodbye, Candace. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.